All right, y'all. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. is live. We are in the building. Be down with us tonight. Call us 804-402-2893. We got a lot to get to, a lot going on in the news. We're going to bring back two old-time favorite segments here on the show. We got, nope, not going to tell you. Tell you on the other side. You're listening to the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. It's called Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J. It's live and it's right now. It's about that time. It's about that time again. Open your ears, strap on your thinking cap, socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half Steppin' with Marcus J. Sellers has Jordan, Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up and scores at the buzzer! Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago! Manning lobs it, Burris alone, touchdown! Down goes Frazier! He hits one deep to right center! That ball is out of here! The Yankees win the pennant! If they lying, then they must be half-stepping. Ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J is live. Be down with us tonight, 804 402 2893 be down with the flagship show heard live from the den of legacy internet radio thank y'all to the folks that's rocking with us tonight we appreciate you already checked in to those folks that are listening to us on tune in thank you to those folks that are checked in to us right now on legacyinternetradio.com thank you to those folks that are checked in on stream licensing thank you and to those folks that are checking in right now on facebook live Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate everybody who is uh, part of this discussion. We're going to get into a lot of stuff tonight. Bringing back two old-time favorites of the show. We used to do a segment called What the Hell, when we would say, what in the hell is going on with these people? We're going to bring that back tonight. And later on, towards the latter stages of the show, we're going to bring back another old-time favorite that segment was called random we used to love to do random we just ask some crazy questions and uh we get some random answers and so i look forward to bringing that to you so we're going to do that later on and then of course uh we want to have a special segment our brother k-dub is going to call in and we're going to have a discussion about some nba stuff but not on the floor stuff uh a little bit different a little bit different spin that we're going to put on the National Basketball Association, and he's the perfect person to help us get through that. So tonight, the usual suspects, I'll introduce them here tonight. You hear our sister join us on her show. It's called I Got Something to Say every single Saturday, 2.30 until 2.30 p.m. on Saturday afternoon, hosted by our brother Tavon. Also hosted by our brother Big E, but really, really hosted by our sister Nick. Nick. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's going on, yo? You know your girl from around the way is here. Bamboo earrings. And these two pairs. Yeah, get it, girl. <laughs> get it, girl. So you doing all right? I'm good. I'm waiting for my you ain't you ain't, you haven't bought my box my box of suckers yet. I'm looking looking for my blow pops. Oh man, you know what we talked about that too. I need like, you to get on it. I'm a terrible person. Uh-uh. I am. I'm a terrible person. And, and you got kids, and I got kids. But you know, my kids don't like candy. Yeah, I'm a terrible person. <laughs> I got the same blow pop that's been in my drawer for like five years, man. You know what? I haven't even eaten it. It's like just been sitting there. You might get drunk off that. I might. You know, <laughs> like that joint right there. It's like breaking case of emergency or something. Yes. You know, it's crazy. You know, I got a bottle of Kavasi that I had from like. 1989 when i was too young to drink it really and i still got it and whatnot I so just, what you I, waiting on oh i'm probably like never gonna drink it no you know what that should be like you and little mama's first drink oh word that's dope yeah that's real dope little mama i'm sorry i gave your daddy oh, that I'm idea but um Geek. she gonna be 
get killed. <laughs> Word is bond. That's what's up. No, I, I never even thought about that because yeah. I was probably about a little. I was a little bit older than what she is right now when I got that bottle. And you know, I don't know why I didn't drink it. I just didn't. Mm-hmm. And then time passed, and months passed, and years passed. I was probably about fifteen, sixteen years old. I still have it. It sits on my bar at the crib. It's a mini. Okay. It's, it's a mini. It's a mini. It's a mini. Yeah. Okay. So maybe maybe Uncle next sitting next to me would o- agree to that. Yeah. It's a mini. We can. Yeah. We. Because his his face did frown up when I suggested it. His face frowned up even more when I said it was a mini. <laughs> 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 so his priorities are all over the all spectrum over. <laughs> and whatnot. I guess we should introduce him. Y'all hear him across many shows here on Legacy and that radio. He has made himself invaluable. Uh, to me personally, of course, for years, but professionally over the last couple, he is my big brother and yours, Big Bro Joe. What's up, man? Yo, what's good, Marcus J? You good? You chilling? Yeah, you know me, man. Another day, another thirty-seven cent minus taxes. Yeah, yeah. I know you're a little, you're a little grumpy about, you know, the little situation that we had with the furniture and stuff. Yeah, know? I'm a little hot about. Yeah, that, I mean, we might as well share because it's what we do. It's just the three of us. Ain't nobody yeah. listening to us. It's just us three. It's, it's just, just us. That we just talk. It's just us talking. You know, this, it's a family thing. It's a family affair. Yeah. You know, it's crazy because. You know, a lot of the long-time listeners, you were seeing us on Facebook Live, and it's down right now, but it's coming back, so so bear with me as I work to bring Facebook Live back up. But, um, you know, a lot of folks know that we've been doing some upgrades here in the den. Some den revitalization. Some mm-hmm. den revitalization. Yep. And uh, one of the big things that is going with the den revitalization is furniture. We got some, some furniture and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I ain't going to tell all my stuff because, like, if I come in one day and, one of y'all got me. <laughs> yeah. it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a situation. Exactly. I mean, y'all family and everything, but I'll point it's y'all out. Be in the some face consequences and some repercussions. And some repercussions so, <laughs> you know, but but seriously, like you know, we had three boxes, and of course, just out of coincidence, we opened up the first. Well, we Joe opened up the first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we ain't French. We, we Joe opens up the first box. Everything's cool. I came in here today and I saw. The piece of furniture, I'm like, my big brother is taking care of me again. Word is born. And so he's getting ready to open up the second one. And there's a piece that was in pieces. And, you know, it was like he had this look on his face like, damn. Yes. Uh, so we'll just have to call and get that one taken care of. I'll just open up this other one and do this other one. Open up the other one. Nick, Nick said, look at your side there, bro. And that one was damaged too. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could have saw Big Bro Joe's face when he realized that both of them was down, yeah, he's he, not happy, guy. He yeah. had that look on his face that you know everybody can relate to. You know, when you get home and you plan on playing outside and you left your bike on the side of the house and, and you get home stole it. and somebody took your bike <laughs> and you're sitting on the front porch. With your elbows on your knees, mad, 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 mad as hell. hell. Mad as hell. Ugh. Yes. That was how That's was. Big Bro Joe right about now. Took us a while for us to get him back. You know, I think he on his way back. He's slowly even, coming back. He He's ain't slowly fully coming back. around. He ain't fully back yet. Mm-hmm. Y'all not mm-hmm. understand. He got a look of disgust and, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, you know, I take pride in the den. I take pride mm-hmm. in the den. We working hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, we were here a little late last night after. Did you say a show? little? Yeah, a little. Yeah, I left. He said a little. Yeah, he left. He I left. left. Facebook yeah. Live. He left. He left. Yeah, I left. He left. Yeah. But no, we weren't here a little late. We were here late. Yeah. Like almost to sun up. Damn. Where did you find out? <laughs> Next day. Yeah, we were, yeah, it was tomorrow. It was tomorrow. It was today. It was tomorrow. It was, today. it was today o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it was today o'clock. <laughs> what not? Shout out to my cousin Terry who's checking us out. Hey, Terry. Hello, my cousin Terry. I love my sister cousin. What up, baby? And uh, of course, your co host is checking us out, Mr. Tavon. Tavon, yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, he's in there. Woo-hoo. He's checking us out as well. What's happening, people? <laughs> <laughs> you got to go a little deeper than that. Hey, look, I can't do it, man. You got to go I, a little I deeper than that. I can't do it. You know what I want to hear? What? Before we get to the business, right? You know what I want to hear? I want to hear Tavon and Mr. LP have a conversation with each other. Oh, like, that is hilarious. <laughs> that would be, you know what I mean? we'd all be sleep. Yeah, like their voices, like. <laughs> they would put us straight out. Barry White ain't got nothing <laughs> on them Neither one of them joints. Not nothing, at all. Not nothing. at all. Like, imagine that. Like, that would be awesome. Take Yo, and, and think about Mr. it. If they, when they first wake up in the morning, it's a lot deeper. <laughs> And it's crazy because time. I talked to Mr. LP this morning and I'm pretty sure I woke him up when I called him. <laughs> and uh like it was like I, I swear I heard him go <laughs> Whoa. I thought I was talking to James Darth Earl Vader. Vader. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Dar- yeah, did you say James L. Vader? James Earl Vader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Or> Darth Jones. <laughs> Darth Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Mr. 3375. What's going on, Bill? My, my, util- my utility players. Check it in, man. You ain't been utilitizing lately, man. Yeah, bro. He you just know? skipped town. Yeah, man. You know, yeah. you know, skip town and whatnot. So you but coming what, you coming back and get your cornbread? <laughs> you, you, <laughs> yeah, man. Come get your cornbread and whatnot. So anyway, I appreciate uh people checking in and continue to uh filter that love and uh he uh you know uh Tavon just dropped a note. He says, have a great show. Distract me real quick. But yeah, that's why I paused for a minute. Yep, have a great show. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's get to some serious stuff. Um, this first segment, segment we call What the Hell. Uh, we haven't done What the Hell in a while. We kind of been doing What the Hell stuff, <laughs> but yeah. we haven't actually called it mm-hmm. What the Hell. Well, yeah, well, yeah. And mm-hmm. I'll explain to the listeners what What the Hell is. Basically, when you hear a story and you cock your head to the side and you side eye, you kind of do the rock eyebrow, and you and say in almost like a falsetto, if you like Tavon or Mr. LP or Marcus J or Big Bro Joe, you almost got it. Almost. You almost got it. You got to tilt your head a little bit. You got to grit a little bit, though. You, you got to grit the, a little bit. I'm when a you, girl. When you, hear, when you hear the story, and then you got to do the lip almost like Antonio Fargus from like the 70s, <laughs> and you go, <laughs> Huggy Bear for y'all that don't know. What the hell? hell? That's what we finna do. Yeah. Finna. Yeah. Sorry, Jersey people. Finna. Sorry, Finna. Jersey people. Oh, you, yo, you was a down south. <laughs> With an F. With an F. <laughs> <laughs> or I could have said fix and tuck. Did you? Fitna? Fitna. 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 Or fix and tuck. Fix and tuck. How about I'm going to talk about this next story? <laughs> Michelle K. Shout out to you as well, sis. Shout out to my sister, Michelle K. He about to make groceries. <laughs> Ooh. Now, that's one I don't get. How, how do you make groceries? I, I don't either. I don't get making groceries. You never. Purchase. I, I, don't, I don't get making We're going to buy groceries? I, I don't get making groceries. but Let's make groceries. I am someone who is very, very passionate about missing children. Mm-hmm. Every single show that I've ever done, all the way back to the original Green Room, before I was even the host of the show, when I was allowed a few minutes to speak at the end of the show, because that's where the rants actually came from. Mm-hmm. That was a Jay Grizzly and Carlton Banks thing. Um, and we gave it names, you know, like the rant was mine because I would go on a rant and Grizzy had, we called it Grizzy's Gripes. I mean, we all had our own little name for stuff. And I always made sure that I brought Missing Children into it and I end the show with it. And I have a missing child that we're going to do tonight. We're going to start off with a story. It's not about an individual. It's about a bunch. I'm getting this one from the Washington Post. And it's talking about how black teens are reported missing and far too few people actually notice and this is an article that's written by Cortland Malloy I see his photo here uh, there were 211 missing people reported in the district in January District of Columbia DC in one month in a month wow. 211 reported missing 190 of them eventually were found to be unharmed that still left 21 missing 10 of them teenage girls. Mm. Just in the past few days, more of them have been found unharmed. Police have not said how they were found or why they went missing, but the description of the girls given when they disappeared reflects a disturbing pattern. Uh, 15-year-old black girl, 5'150", 170. Another, 5'5", I'm sorry, uh, on January 10th. February 1st, 5'7", 125. 14 year old, February 2nd, 5'5, 130. Missing two others, 16 and 15, very, very similar tales of the tape. Black teenage girls, remarkably close in age, physical description, reported missing, then found. They may be among the lucky ones, so many disappear and are never found again. There are many missing children that we do here on this show, mm-hmm. and you know we, we recap what happened if we find out what happened, but oftentimes we, you know, we profile them when we can, uh, and then hopefully if someone sees them, they report it, and, and we kind of move from there. But I didn't know about this, and I live, like you guys, 120. 100 miles away from D.C. Mm-hmm. And how is it that we are 100 miles away from D.C. and 10 black girls go missing over the course of 30 days who fit the same description and we don't know about it 
a hundred miles away in Richmond. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years ago, because I'm that guy that will call a news station. Uh, I'm that guy who will write a letter. I'm that guy. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember the case, but there was a case of a missing black girl, and she wasn't from here. She was from another area or whatever. And I called um, the usual local stations here. We won't call them out, but we all know who they are. And the one station that responded to me, I'll call them out because I like CBS. I always have. Mm -hmm. The CBS local responded to me. The others never even responded to me. But what was told to me didn't make me happy. Even though they responded, it didn't make me happy. And I want you guys to kind of jump in here and, and kind of comment, Neat, you first as a lady in the room. What was said to me was, even though this young girl was missing, there was nothing sensational about her case other than the fact that she was missing. In my letter or email at the time to the news station, I lamented the fact that you had a lot of people who go missing who are not black teenage girls or boys for that matter that get national coverage. Grown women, grown white women, because we know that there is a large, uh, there's a large priority placed upon missing white women. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I'm speaking out of turn when I say that. I think, you know, my perspective is pretty, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. And the one at the time that was really, really burning me up was the runaway bride girl, who many of us remember. She's the one that when it was time to get married, she got cold feet, didn't want to get married. So she went to Disney World mm -hmm. while everybody was looking for her. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. I also remember the case of the girl who went missing on the field trip down in Aruba. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Casey. Somebody. No, yeah. Casey Anthony was the girl that killed her kids, kids. and said the black guy No, no, no. Uh, the other chick name was Casey as well. Because uh, I know I remember that one distinctly because I remember that uh -huh. Aruba was not, it's not that big. And they were like, well, what happened? And she was, I think she was. They said that she was drunk because she was with like three or four other girls. Yeah, it was, was it Casey? I think it's it was not Casey. Casey. No, Let it's me, not Casey. It's yeah. not Casey. Uh, I can't. Natalie Holloway. Yeah, Natalie. 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 Well, you know they all look alike. <laughs> Natalie Holloway. <laughs> so, Nick, jump in here first. Talk to me about your thoughts. I got a very strong passion for it. I don't know that anybody's passion for it. While you may feel bad about missing people and missing children, I don't know that anybody's passion reaches the level of Marcus J. But I certainly want to know what everybody's feelings are about it. Jump in here. Well, first of all, being a parent, I can't imagine what any other parent is going through. Not being able to know, talk to, you know, or have any idea where their children are or the child is. That, that, that blows my mind. But for a news station to say, oh, this particular case is not priority or this doesn't get coverage because of whatever. That is ridiculous. You would put on the news about a child, that Amber Alert thing. Oh, a child under 10, Amber Alert, because we need to find this missing child. You do something for the elderly. You do something for, like you said, you know, middle age, young age, Caucasian women. But African Americans, we have to spend for ourselves. And we have a lot, a lot of kids of different nationalities missing, no, and no one can explain why. You touched on it that, yes, they're fitting this particular type of profile, so why are they targeting these particular children? There is, there's something behind it, right. which me as a parent scares me. So I've got daughters. Right. I have a son, and I always tell them, be careful. Know your whereabouts. If something doesn't look right to you, make sure you call the authorities. So, or get into a safe place. Big bro, I, I'm sorry. I can't imagine. I can't, I, I mean, their, their response was just ridiculous. I was offended. And if they didn't want to put the work in, then say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was definitely offended, and quite frankly, I was pissed off. Um, because, I, I, you know, I hadn't started doing radio yet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I guess it was probably one of the reasons why it was important to me to, 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 to start doing something like this when I had the platform to be able to do it. But it didn't, it wasn't a situation where, as we were brought up, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. The more you jump up and scream, you get some notoriety behind it. Is that what that's about? I, 
honestly, mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's it. I, I just think that, you know, quite frankly, you have to, you got to catch the right ear, mm-hmm. the right eye, because on occasion, you will see, like, the, the girl, the black girl who went missing in Churchill a couple of months ago, mm-hmm. and then her brother was murdered, like, yeah. last month. Right. And whatnot. Now her mother has a missing child and a dead child. Mm-hmm. But even before the brother was murdered, that girl's story was pretty big news here locally. It still is pretty and big it's news. Stu- and it still is. But I, the irony is she's not a child. She's, right. like, 21. Right. You know what I mean? And, of course, she's someone's child. And I don't want to, dis- you know, discount that. But my point is... Every single week, because I researched these mm-hmm. and I looked them up, and I, you know, I usually get a kid across the state. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes Tide Water, sometimes Nova, Northern Virginia, mm-hmm. but usually I try to find a kid here. Mm-hmm. This our hood, mm-hmm. and when I do find a kid here, they're usually twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. They ain't home. Right. Don't matter. You know, you see a kid. He's six foot one, but he's fourteen. You're not gonna look for him because he's six foot one. No, that's he's not fourteen. He's four, right. But you got to think about it too. I mean, and I'm so with you, but the the way we're devalued, and I'm sorry, but that's just the only mm-hmm. thing I can say is that we devalue ourselves, and hence the communities and the people quote unquote the the folks who can make it happen who the folks who can put stuff out on the radio and the TVs and stuff like that devalue us as well and have we been desensitized too I don't think we're desensitized I mean like you said any parent I, I really can't think of any parent who if their child is missing is not losing their mind right I mean let's just be real about it because yeah. I've had well <laughs> y'all know me I got I have my children and I told my my oldest two I was like listen I need y'all to fight, scratch, claw, scream, holler, do whatever you need to do, mm-hmm. you know, so, because, and, and, and it's just, that's one of those things where we always have to stick together. But like I said, you have to make sure that we are valuing ourselves before folks will start to really, really take notice and value us like we value ourselves. You know, the sad thing with that, though, Big Bro, is <clears throat> as, air quotes, as Americans, we should feel the same sense of loss regardless of who it is it's a child and i agree i agree it's a it's It's a a it's a it's a child it's like for me the greatest gift that we've ever been given is children and old people because a child obviously is a gift you don't even have to explain that but an old person someone in today's day and age that live long enough to be old Mm -hmm. And it's probably someone that wiped your ass at some point. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you're going to feel some kind of way about doing it for them when they can't. You know what I'm saying? So children and old people is like, if you don't feel a special sense of responsibility towards those two communities, that says more about you than anything else. So I I agree with you, but 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 I get frustrated with the devaluation argument because the human spirit should tell you that you value a missing child. Right. It shouldn't matter that the daddy's an ass. It, it really shouldn't matter. It does. It does. It does. It does. It does. It does. It does but it shouldn't. It shouldn't. It, it should. I agree. It, mm-hmm. it, it 100%. Should. It, it shouldn't. And I will say also, you know, I've noticed that old, the, like you said, old people, they get a lot more... And, I, and I've seen this on both sides, <clears throat> both the black, the white, Hispanic, and it doesn't make a difference. Old folks normally get a boost because they're sick. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if some of them have um, mental illnesses yes, and things of that, mm-hmm. that nature, mm-hmm. you, uh, I, and I will say that about this area, they will rally behind that to help you find me. Yeah. And I can tell you that. From, they, do fa- they do give them FaceTime, a lot of FaceTime. Yeah, I can tell you that from experience. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But then, like you said, I mean, a lot of them think, and, and and most of these kids don't come from the affluent areas 
also they come from the hood areas right and a lot of times people think well okay did the kids run away or did they run up, or were they running from to get out the house because they didn't want to be in that neighborhood no more you know it's well, funny because that you mentioned runaway because someone asked me why do you profile runaways because he's 14 that's why yeah yeah I mean, he he's not home. Butt beaten, brought back. Well, <laughs> I mean, if he needs, house. if he need, if he needs to get a, catch a two piece from dad or uncle, you know, or granddad or or big brother, yeah. when he get home for running off and scaring and the scaring family, the hell out of you. then then so be it. But you know, back to the original story, it's ten black girls in a thirty day span that fit the same description that went missing, and most of which turned up. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, don't nobody think that's weird on a national level? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but you know what? There was a lot of gang activity going around with that as well. Because I've seen two cases where the two young ladies were ended up missing and they they were found. And it was a gang initiation or it was... Because we don't hear a lot about gangs here in the city. Not right. in this not, city. Not mm-hmm. here. In the not country. here. Not Richmond, mm-hmm. yeah. But they are, they are here. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And they do, I mean, we hear a lot about that and people getting snatched up or then they getting shown, they, you know, they getting back. Oh, okay, well, guess what? They might have paid the ransom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, they might have sit there and uh, they might have figured out, that, oh, well, this wasn't the person we were look, trying to get to. Yeah. There's a lot of human trafficking going around and with the criteria that you just stated that all fits Mm -hmm. into the categories of human trafficking so parents need to be aware and pay attention to their children and that's another angle to the whole missing child thing that Mm -hmm. i think is absolutely lost very glad you brought out that point ain't no half step with marcus j live from the den legacy internet radio you want to be down with us tonight give us a call the phone lines are open 804-402-2893 thanking everybody that's rocking with us here tonight now i want to shift because what the hell which what makes it cool is kind of quick hits we could spend all night talking about that last piece we could spend all night talking about this next one this one i'm getting from the huffington post it's about a school that apologizes for asking students to make slave auction posters (laughs) this is a school in my, oh, in my, yeah, this is a, what the hell. This, is a, this is a school in my home state of New Jersey, an elementary school. After they're furious, after their fifth graders were given an assignment suggesting that they recreate slave auction posters. Teachers at South Mountain Elementary School in South Orange, which is not very far from where my family lives, mm-hmm. what up, bruh? Uh, South Orange, New Jersey, told students to draw a colorful poster, quote, colorful poster advertising an event that might occur, end quote, during the time period they were assigned for a colonial American history lesson. The assignment listed a poster for a lecture, speech, protest, or slave auction as examples. One student made poster listed enslaved men and women as a field hand or fine house girl, while another served as a wanted dead or alive poster. The school displayed the children's completed posters on the walls during parent-teacher conference. While visiting parents, while visiting parents, including Jamil Kareem, noticed the images. Kareem posted them on Facebook and condemned the assignment for lacking context, saying, quote, educating young students on the harsh realities of slavery is of course not the issue here, but the medium for said education is grossly insensitive and negligent, he wrote. In a curriculum that lacks representation for students of color, it breaks my heart that these will be the images that young black and brown kids see with with their skin color. Uh, and then there's a picture uh, that I'm showing to Joe and Neat. And uh, I'm going to try to see, you know, multitasking here, but trying to see you Facebook Live folks can see a picture of that slave auction that the kids uh, drew there. Um, I guess that's kind of what I wanted to get to. The administrators, uh, there's been town halls and they're, they're talking about a representative from the South Orange Maple School District sent a statement. The superintendent, John Ramos Sr., sent the parents, uh, says the assignment was part of a three-part colonial project which the school has assigned for the past decade. He said in the statement he understands why some parents found the images disturbing. 
Uh, it's, they're committed to infusing cultural competency in every aspect of our learning community. As part of this never-ending process, it is important that we reflect on the unintended effects of our curriculum, instruction, and interactions. Having reflected on the concerns shared with us, We've decided to remove the slave auction posters from the South Mountain hallways, and we apologize for any unintended offense or hardship this activity has caused. Obviously, there's more, but I think we've got it properly set up, judging by the looks on both of y'all faces. Neek, Neek has the, the, the side eye from hell right now, like for real. Like Neek looked like she just rolled up on some stuff, and she about, she has questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's the face you got. And, and all Joe can do is, is wipe his brow. Yo. Uh, Joe, you up first on this one. <laughs> you, you up first on this one. I, you know what? I might, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to defer for a minute. Okay. I gotta breathe a little right, bit. Get yourself I gotta together. breathe because you know, you know, I was mad already. Yeah, yeah, I had started to come back. Yeah, and now I'm mad as hell all again. Yeah, so well, I'm gonna have to defer. Well, uh, shout out first of all, shout out to my sister Laurel, who's checking us out. What's, What's up, good, sis? Laurel? Uh, cousin, hey, Laurel. Cousin Terry says, according to Ben Carson. <sighs> There was no slavery, just immigrants looking for a better life. The administration and school district should be replaced. What an insult. Um, Nick, what do you think about this? You have children who have gone through the school system. Mm -hmm. And if you had gotten wind of an assignment like this, how do you think you would have reacted? Well, first of all, why is it that? Whenever a woman starts with Will, first of all, boy, you know it's <laughs> Yo, some shit. Like, Did you just move out of the room? No, see, because I have, I have, I have two sides to this. First, it made me angry, but then I said to myself, "Wait a minute, aren't we the same people that get upset because they're so quick to change history and not tell the whole truth about what we've endured for what we, and what we endured for four hundred years? So now, what you want is an apology." And they're trying to teach the children during this colonial event, whatever, whatever, that this is the thing or these are the things that transpired during this period of time. Was it Black History Month? Maybe. When was this assignment, you know, given out? And then two parents, why weren't you aware that this was a part of the assignment? For a decade. For a decade. So I don't think the school system needed to apologize. I really don't. Yes. And it, you can do it either way. Apologize for it. Some people are getting offended. But what you getting offended for? When these, these are the things that we want our kids to know. These are the things we want our kids to learn. Did you look at that picture? I, but look, we, but the ages of these children, they're, they're young. But, but that's, and you know what? Thank you, Nick. You hit the nail on the head. If you looked at the picture itself, it showed a slave smiling on a slave i mean the picture was a, a smiling black person and if you're teaching them the true context of what slavery was it won't nobody up there smile and i'm not disagreeing with you with that that's true but if we're teaching this to say third and fourth graders okay then what did you did you expect for the teacher to say oh no 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 sir boy little boy or johnny or mary lou you need to go back and change this person's smile to a frown. Well, no, but you stated that if they were teaching, you said, no, they shouldn't get upset because they were teaching about this and we want all of the views shown. There's never been a slave smiling. True. So if you're telling the children well, we the whole say, story. We can't say that it was never a slave smiling. We can't I, say that. Okay. you Because know we you, weren't there. I, I, I got you. I, I think that. Well, I, I'm going to jump in here. Um, first of all, Terry agrees with you, uh, Nate. Um, hey, Terry. I, 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 I understand where you both are coming from. Uh, I, I tend to, to, to side a little bit with Big Bro in the sense of semantics. Because, yeah, we know that there was probably some joy and some laughter from time to time when you had a child or, you know, you had a chance to actually get married. or right. Your mentality is so not like how a free man's mentality is that those smiles that would come and i'm sure there were some mm -hmm. were for things that we would scoff at today right but even that i mean but that ain't the, even the, that's not where i was going with that but this was a auction bill it wasn't one of those times that it was a, a joy because it was a birth or a joy because it was a marriage no this was an auction 
to buy a slave. To buy a slave. Which is, yeah. which is the, nobody smiling. Promise. Which is, this is, this, 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 that, what, that's my outrage. But, but, that's what the, I, but what I don't understand is why is that an issue? My point is they were trying to teach the kids about an era that was happening. I, I, think, the outrage, I think the outrage comes from the idea of teaching little kids to draw pictures of slave slaves is a very not positive time in our history right and at that age as impressionable as they are Mm -hmm. there's so many more positive things that we could be talking about instead of talking about the darkest period of our history and making it so that i'm going to be a pure 10 year old of course you're going to draw a picture of a smile Mm -hmm. because that's what 10 year olds do do. that's what 10 year olds do but like joe said there wasn't no smiling there. Right. And that, and we weren't there to have the conversation with the teacher or whoever th- this event. They may have discussed that, right. that there were, this was not a happy period. Possibly, yeah. But I applaud that particular school system for doing so. Yeah. And making this a part of their curricula because who's to say that when they got to middle school, high school, whatever, they may not ever see this stuff again. Yeah, I because think because we're so quick, they're so quick. Society is so quick to pull that out of that's that's not what happened. You said it first. Ben Carson said well, there me, were no slaves well, who were immigrants. Let me, let me play devil's advocate with you then. Do you think that? And I know South, I know South Orange, mm-hmm. and so I'm going to translate this to Richmond just to make the point because mm-hmm. we know we got a lot of folks listening to us in Richmond. And the folks back home in Jersey, y'all already know where I'm going because you know about what South Orange is. Mm-hmm. So let's just use Henrico County for a second. Okay. South Orange, mm-hmm. that's Henrico High and Highland Springs. Mm-hmm. Do we have the same project that's being done at Tucker and Freeman or at Glen Allen High School? Or at James River. Or James River. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you going to have the little white kids drawing slave auctions? Because if you do, then what side of that slave auction are they going to be on? They're going to be the ones with the chains and the whips. Mm -hmm. So you're indoctrinating the child already as a 10-year-old what your place is, what your position is. Mm -hmm. Because if that's the same, and and we ain't even got to break down the neighborhood. Let's just say, because every hood got some white boys. Oh, yeah. We, we We all knew some white boys just like... Every you know white neighborhood you know got their got their black kids mm-hmm. right. So if you got some white boys in your class and you're told to draw a slave auction, instinctually you're gonna draw the picture how you see yourself. And so if you're a white kid in that class, you're gonna draw a picture of yourself as the overseer, mm-hmm. just as the black kid drew a picture of himself as the slave. And that might not be too good when you get back on the block. Visually, visually, that's a problem for me. Uh, yeah. Because you already got this mindset of where you fit in society. So you know that when you grow up, you're going to grow up to do this, and you're going to grow up to do that. So would you rather for them not to teach it at all? I would rather, I would rather them have a conversation as opposed to drawing pictures about where you fit into this picture. Mm-hmm. We can have a conversation about it, right. absolutely, because I think we'd be unwise to not teach our children the history mm-hmm. of this country and how it was founded. I got a problem with the whole story about Thanksgiving. It's bullshit. Right. Because we know the marauders came from England and slaughtered these people, mm-hmm. and we celebrate it every, every year. Every year. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you even, got some, you even got some fair-minded white folk that be like, yeah, that is some bullshit. Yeah. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and so we teach these parables and fables to these kids every year. Mm-hmm. And we grow up with it as grown folk now in our 40s, and we pissed off. And every once in a while, when you see a, 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 a white person look or say something a certain kind of way, you immediately think and feel some kind of way about him because you're like, I know he's racist. Maybe he's not. Maybe <laughs> he just don't he, like you. He <laughs> he <was talking laughs> Maybe he just don't like mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. But you know in your heart of hearts that he's a certain kind of way. Why? Because you was brought up with this stuff. Right. And this is how it starts. I want to know why it took Mr. Kareem after 10 years of the, them doing this, 10 years of them doing this, finally we got a parent to say, oh, hell no. And I don't think that's the truth either. I think there's been a lot of sugarcoating 
and whitewashing of what has gone on mm-hmm. in the society as far as that's concerned. Think back when they um, banned Huck, was it Huck Finn? Huck Finn, Huck they, Finn. they banned the N word. Yeah. They banned the N word. Mm-hmm. But okay, so you're not gonna teach, now, I, we, had, we had to read that. And you know what, I'm mm-hmm. glad you brought that up yeah, because I don't, at the risk of sounding like a hypocrite, I have a hard, big, big time problem with them pulling the N word out of a literary, air quotes again, classic. 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 You know, because we mean, all teach read the truth, Huck Finn. Teach the truth. Well, think about the books that they don't even let them read anymore that we had to read. Well, yeah. think about this, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna paint this picture, and I don't want to move on to some Catch other stuff, right? right? But we know that most of the history books for this country are made in Texas. So we already know how Texas wrote well, they right. about some kind of mm-hmm. stuff. We talk about whitewashing. We talk about the fact that they don't want to use the N-word in certain books, right? Mm-hmm. And then we're talking about how the uh, history books. We did this story on the show two years ago, how the parent got a hold of the history book that was coming out in the next term where it didn't even use the word slave no more. It said worker. Mm-hmm. It said worker. You know what I'm saying? And when you look at movies and you see Cleopatra being played by Lily White Elizabeth Taylor. We're not going to do that. Ben Hur. And you see Ben <laughs> Hur by Charlton Heston. Mm-hmm. And you see God even even Egypt. today, <laughs> you're talking about guys, guys in Egypt. Egypt. You got you got um, a dude from Wales and you got, um, uh, you know, it's the Batman ben. guy. Yeah. Christian Bale. Christian Bale. And then, and then the, here's the one that really got me because I always was fascinated by the story of Noah's Ark because that was the biggest load of crap in the Bible I ever heard in my life. Yeah. Like, for real, that was a story that said, yeah, I can't read this. Like, this is crazy. So, yeah, you look at the book and stuff, you see two lines, but they both got manes. Come on, man. How are they going to have babies? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I'm di- I'm a digress a little. Yeah, you digress. I want to know how they got They got manes, man. I, I want to know how somebody the drew, made it. Somebody drew, somebody drew it incorrectly. That's the whole Uh-oh. point. We got a call up. That's, a, that's, that's the whole point. And, and, and it, just, it just makes me mad. Russell Crowe from Australia, he, he, he's playing no. Ain't no how to stab with Marcus J. Live from the Den, Legacy, Internet Radio. Caller, you rocking with us? We rolling with y'all. Yeah, What's your name? Hey, Laurel. I just want to say something about this because I'm listening to it. And it's, you know, I'm listening to everybody, what everybody has to say about it. And I just want to say one thing. If you're going to teach it, you have to teach it the right way in the right context. Every child in Germany that grows up and goes to school in Germany has to visit the death camp. Mm-hmm. Wow. You can see mm, that's, what that is. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Mm. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, mm. part of the, that's part of their curriculum. Wow. They wow. Got now, see, now that's something else. That's gangster. Yeah. But you know, see, when my daughter was in high school, she was required to go to the Holocaust Museum right down on that that was disturbing i laurel that'll definitely put it in perspective it sure would okay i'm gonna hang up so, long, so i can keep listening love you guys <laughs> right. thanks, laurel. thanks laurel love you too sis but can you imagine if we if all of the kids were required to go to the to the national uh african-american museum now now and go down and go down and and, and come back up in the, history spend the day there they ain't ready they ain't ready they're not ready ain't no half step on marcus j live from the dan legacy and that radio keep the phone ringing 804 Four zero two two eight nine three. You rock with us. We roll with y'all. This one pissed me off too. <sighs> Did you just oh, sign? No, it's about to be one of them. It said Buffalo, New York mom was arrested because she homeschooled, homeschooled her kids. Yes. <laughs> they gave her her sentence. What was her sentence? Well, let's go through the story and see how much we can get. Kiara Harris, single mom from Buffalo, realized her school district was failing to properly educate her two elementary age kids. So she filed the necessary paperwork to formally remove the kids from public school and begin the process of homeschooling them herself. She says she went to City Hall and picked up the paperwork she needed. She showed her local news station, 7 Eyewitness News, her paperwork that the school district acknowledged that it had received. Harris told the news station, quote, I spoke directly to the homeschool coordinator, and she told me from this point on my children were officially unenrolled from school. She said about a week later she received a call from Child Protective Services inquiring why her kids were, were not attending school. Harris stated, I told them, CPS, that my kids were homeschooled now and that I could furnish the documents if they needed to see them. After speaking with CPS, Harris assumed everything was now sorted out. She continued teaching her kids at home. After a month passed, she was accosted by a CPS in the Buffalo P- the Police Department with an order to remove her kids from her custody. She refused to allow them to take her children and she was arrested for obstructing a court order. 
Her kids were placed in foster care, and she hasn't been able to see them for over three weeks now. Buffalo School District has tried to justify their actions by claiming Harris wasn't able to remove her kids from school because she doesn't have full legal custody of her children. She countered their claim by stating she's always been a single parent, therefore she does have full custody of her kids. A local Buffalo Councilman, Ulysses O. Wingham, Wingo Sr., sorry, sir, has weighed in on the matter and said it's utterly unacceptable that Harris was arrested for educational neglect because she complied with everything that was required of her. I'm getting this one from Black Main Street, but this story is out there on the web. Uh, I encourage you to look it up and do some research on it if you have any questions about that. But we're going to talk about it, Nick. What you got? That's some bullshit. <laughs> First of all, that's yeah. some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flag but what? Flag. All right. But newsflash for all the single parents out there, if y'all listening, don't automatically assume that you have custody of your children. If the if your missing partner or strange partner is not in the kid's life, or is not helping you with these kids, go to court and file custody for custody of your children. Get that documentation get the documentation that's one thing that they can't take from you once you got it unless you end up being unfit okay so go and file for custody of your children you can't assume that because you've all where you raised them you've been taking care of them that oh i have full custody no get it get it in writing mm. by the court all right. trust and believe that my attorney told me that years ago yeah okay secondly if she was able and if she followed everything that they told her to do why was why why are her children in foster care why would you even why would you even do that to those kids they have no idea why they've been removed from their mother's custody i get so frustrated with this stuff because you know i always i, I just i don't i don't i don't trust the government and i don't trust mm -hmm. you know organizations that are said to be in place to take care of people and people's rights. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time with that. I think that there is a undercurrent of, I hope you mess up so that I could put you down. Right. Having said that, those kids, once you hit the system, we know that the incidences of you having a rough life go up. Mm -hmm. And the rougher your life is, the more likely you're going to end up incarcerated. And if you end up incarcerated, that's when the 13th Amendment plays in again. Mm -hmm. And people don't remember that, you know, the, the, the amendments. Well, the 13th Amendment says, if your ass go to jail, you get to be good old slave again, okay? That's why you can go to jail and work all day for $2. You know what I'm saying? But and so once you, as a child, end up in the system, the likelihood of something crazy happening goes up. They want you in that system, man. Right. I agree with you on that. But then, too, you're, you're invoking mental illness on these children. That's – think about it. We could, well, see, I mean, it is this multi-pronged attack, though. Yeah. You inflict mo mental illness, now you get to – now you got to – now I got to pay to, to, to treat myself from something that you inflicted that upon you me. That you inflicted upon me. Because there's no money in – the cure of anything. Right. Now, we, that's a whole nother conversation, but ain't no money and no cure or nothing. But you tell me this. What did that school system or what did they, st what did they stem, stem the game by doing this to this woman? You know, for yourself, you have neighbors, you have your kids' friends, a lot of people you've met over the years that were homeschooled. They started out in school and now they're homeschooled. I've never heard of such of an issue that someone wanted to pull their kid out of a school system because she felt that they weren't they weren't teaching their kids properly. I mean, I, I know homeschooling is is fine because I know I know a person, a friend of mine, homeschools her children. My godson mm -hmm. was homeschooled for a few years. I know several people that were homeschooled, and to be honest with you, they got better education. Come on now, let's let's call a spade a spade. The reason that they went at this black woman because she is space because she because she, she's, she's a space wow. <laughs> no because she's black you say she's call a space space yeah. okay yeah. and because she put them on notice she went to the news she invoked she, her she rights mm -hmm. and yeah she embarrassed she them. embarrassed them. so when you embarrass the pro quit mm -hmm. uh, quit pro quo quit pro quo mm -hmm. then guess what you got to get slapped on the hand and on and on and to piggyback on that. Two, Joe, 
they never ever expect for us to have our documentation in order. Oh, yeah. And they don't expect us to fight. Exactly. <laughs> they don't expect so us they to fight. expect for you to for them to say what they want to say and do whatever they want to do to you because why you don't have proof and you don't have the money to get out of it. Yeah. And, and the unfortunate reality is many of us don't prepare properly right. so that we don't have the proof. Even if we have the proof, many of us don't have the money mm-hmm. to be able to get ourselves out of the trouble, the trouble. that we end up in mm-hmm. for reasons that may not have anything to do with our own behavior. Exactly. You know, and it's, 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 it's difficult. It's frustrating because I get really, really, really tired of having to explain to people who have certain privileges mm-hmm. what it's like to, to be me. To, 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 to have to not have those privileges. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. And there's certain privileges, trust me, I don't want them. But I do want to be treated for it, fairly. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there was an article, not an article, there was an incident recently. I can't remember where it was. I think it may be Maryland. I'm not sure where it was. Uh, you know, a, a, another guy shot by the police, you know, while complying mm-hmm. and, and, and killed. And he Facebook, he's Facebook living it, and you hear him before he shot saying, you know, I'm doing what y'all say, but I need you to get a supervisor out here because I'm not really rocking with y'all. I'm paraphrasing, but I'm mm-hmm. not rocking with y'all. Mm-hmm. So get a supervisor out here. Mm-hmm. And then he gets shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, you can pull up videos where you see, you know, other people with certain privileges that get talked down for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> or get taken to Burger King. After killing nine people. After killing nine. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Certain yeah, privileges. Yeah, we gonna yeah. be there. Oh yeah. Or, Membership. Or, or or you could be a member of a certain, uh, you know, alt right conservative, you know, terrorist organization and blow up a hundred and seventy people in a in a federal building, and not become the face of terrorism in this country. Wow, did I go there? Ain't yeah. no half stepping with Marcus yeah. J. Live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. Hopefully, I offended some people. Eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three. If you want to call and complain about it, we're gonna rock and roll for the rest of the night. We're gonna take our first break of the night. We come back. We're gonna have our special guest, our brother K Dub's, going to join us on the live line. He's going to talk to us about resting, resting in the NBA. Are you all right with your favorite player not playing when they come to your town on the road? Do you be mad? I know I do, and I'm going to tell him that. Marcus J and the crew, and you be back in a few. Is my mic on? Oh, okay. Legacy Internet Radio. It's your girl, the first lady, comedianess, Lissa P. Ow, ow. Make sure you're tuned in to the number one internet radio station around. Legacy Internet Radio. Be sure to check out our website at www.legacyinternetradio.com or you can download the free TuneIn app. Go to the search, type in Legacy Internet Radio and there you'll have us. Legacy Internet Radio where independence is the key to building your legacy. Ow, ow! Tired of wearing that same old raggedy t-shirt to group events, civic and work situations? then why don't you check out our folks, Live Action Captions. They offer t-shirt services here in the Richmond and Tri-City area, offering multicolored, direct-to-garment printing and an affordable price. Guess what? No charge for changing colors for a design either. Pick and choose whatever you want out of the rainbow. No minimums at all. Discounts at 25 or more. If you'd like to rock one of these hot shirts that we here at Legacy Internet Radio do, then you can get with live action captions at 804-640-7180. Again, that's 804-640-7180. And for all the folks who don't like to use the telly, we got it on the internet at live-action-captions at comcast.net. Again, live-action-captions at comcast.net and at that same title on Facebook and Instagram. No need to worry about it shrinking. We got you covered. Live-action-captions. <laughs> 